Hello, uh, today I want to introduce you to the Belchcraft malt kits and some of the equipment that you might need when you are busy brewing your beer. You're going to need a 21 litre pot, it can either be aluminium or it can be stainless steel, the stainless steel one we sell on our site. And I would like to show you what's in the box. Uh, today we're going to be making a Belchcraft Belgian triple. And just a little bit about this is the ABV is the alcohol content, so it's 8%. Your OG is your original gravity, so the higher um, the value, the more alcohol it normally contains. The IBUs is the bitterness, and the SRMs is the color. And you can get hold of that on our site. Now I'd just like to open it, and you can see the contents of the put inside. Okay, we have got one, two bags of malt. This is already pre-mixed and vacuum sealed to keep that freshness in. We have got your candy sugar. Depending on the type of beer you are brewing, some of the kits will contain candy sugar. And we've got your little kit that's got your pops in. Um, it's got your bottling sugar and it's got your yeast. We've got 30 mils of sanitizer to clean all your equipment. And the brewing instructions. So let's get brewing. Um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to mix your uh, 10 mils of sanitizer with a litre of water. Uh, you want to keep everything sanitized so I push my paddle in the air and I put my thermometer in here. And then you're going to add, we've already got it boiling, we've got 14 liters of strike water. That's uh, the water that you use right in the beginning. You must get this water up to temperature, the magic number of 74 degrees. So let's see, we're almost there. Let's take a look. And we have reached 74 degrees. Now is the time where we are going to be doing a brew in the bag. We found that this is the simplest method and quickest, easiest method to do your mashing in as well. So you can find the grain bag on our site and also we include the hop bag with that. It's grain bag and hop bag. All right. Makes quite a difference these. Um, instead of throwing the hops directly in, you put them in that bag and it doesn't mess up your beer. Okay, you just attach it just like this. I like moving that around and we've attached the drawstring to it and you secure it like that so it fits nice and snug. Just take the little rope and tie it to the handle. There we go. Now it's time to put the grain in or the malt, as they would say. Okay, let's just cut this open over here. Whoop, okay. Nice. Lovely. Let's put the second one in. You can give it a stir now, but uh, I don't really see it clumping up together or anything, so I think it's absolutely fine to put the second one in. Alright. Oh, yum. Smell delicious. It works. So, don't faff with this too much. Just make sure that there is any doughy pieces um, that they are removed, stir it around, stir it nicely around, there we go, I think you can see that, how does that look, lovely, okay I'll give it a good stir, making sure, pick some grain up, and just see if there's any lumps in it, or doughy pieces, okay so when you put your grain in, you should reach a temperature of about 66 degrees Celsius. 
um, the temperature does drop once you put your, your grain in. So I'm just measuring it now. You don't want it to drop lower than 66. If it does by any chance, just bring it back up to 66. As you can see, it is 65. Okay, then you put your gas off or your stove plate off. You don't want it to cook any further or boil any further, I mean. Okay, I'm on 66, I'm happy with that. Now we've started the mashing process and this mashing process um, produces wort. And that is your beer. Great, now you put your lid on and you just forget about it for 60 minutes. So put your timer on, one hour and start. Okay, 60 minutes have passed and we are finished with the mashing process. Let's just take the lid off. Okay. And you need one of these racks. We've got them on our site as well. And um, that comes on top of the pot. And the bag will rest on top of the pot. And we can start with our sparging process. Alright, just pull the drawstring together and take this little black gadget and secure it and now you want to lift it up just halfway that the liquid can drain out a little bit otherwise it becomes quite heavy to actually lift up and put it on the rack all right so what we want to do is we want to slide this rack on top of the pot and lift this up there we go now that it's resting on top, you want to make sure that it's sitting inside the pot and no areas are sitting outside the pot, otherwise we're going to have spillage. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And what I like doing to make this process a bit easier is give this a few twirls. Right, so that it's secured like that and start wrapping this cord around that twill. This is just to make sure that your bag is as tightly compressed as possible and so that it doesn't leak over the sides. Right, okay, that looks fine. Just give it twirls right up until the end. There we go. All right, now we're ready to start our sparging process. So, we're going to be using half of five liters of water um, that we're going to prepare. Um, you Probably the easiest way to get that done is to boil it in a kettle um, so that you reach 74 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Celsius. And that is the quickest method that I've found. The other one is you use a secondary pot, heat it up, heat your, your five liters of water up till 75 degrees, and then you pour half of that over. So from here we are busy sparging. Just pour this over and the reason why we do this is to rinse your grain bag out or your malt bag out out of all the sugars that can still possibly be in here. Alright, just pour it over slowly. We don't want to mess all over the shows so we found that this bag is a seven uh, is a 35 centimeter diameter bag and it fits perfectly over um, your 25 liter pots or in this case this is a 35 liter pot okay that was the first bit of a kettle and um, i'll be putting another kettle over now okay after the first kettle has been poured over um, you could have actually put your heat back on before that kettle, or I've put it on right now to get this um, up to temperature, we want to get it to a rolling boil. Uh, here comes my second kettle. We just want to take a look at its temperature. Generally, before it, stop, uh, before it starts boiling, um, you turn it off and you'll reach 74 degrees. Well, 75 degrees. Okay, mine's 76. I'm fine with that. It's close enough and we want to pour that gently and slowly over ensuring that you cover the sides as well because that's where some of the goodness comes from 
that. And there we go. Now you can go boil more kettles. Remember we want to put five liters of water into this pot, but I found that two kettles is plenty to get the sugars out. But you are welcome to use all of the five liters. It'll just take you a longer time to get all of this poured over. I've just realized it's quicker this way and I get all of my sugars out by using two kettles. Dokes. We want to transfer the bag into a container that we can discard this bag and you can use this malt um, in your garden. Um, it's good for fertilizer or you can go look for recipes online. Okay, let's take a look. You need to cool this down of course a little bit. You don't want to burn yourself. And you also want to wait till all the, the liquid has dripped through the bag. I think that's cool enough for me to handle. Some liquid might come through there. Right, let's transfer it. Go. Right, so we can remove that. And we can put the lid back on while I heat up the other bit of water. Um, it'll be around about 2.5 liters of water. Heat that up to 75 degrees and put it in the pot as we go along. Great, so once your wort has come up to boiling temperature, a nice rolling boil, you can add your hop additions and we're going to be adding it to the hopper bag. So let's get that going. Right. So what we're going to do is just tie this down to the handle. There we go. And open up your bag. And you want to start adding your hop additions on the hop bags itself you will see that there are three different types of hops. Well, two, two different types. There's Hirschbacher and there's Saas. And you can see they have different times when you will put them in. So with this, it says at 60 minutes. So from 60 minutes um, from the end of the boil. And with this, it's 45 minutes towards the end of the boil. And that comes in at five minutes towards the end of the boil. If your kit does contain its candy sugar. Yeah, you'll see it says 15 minutes towards the end of the boil. Okie dokes. So, you can start your timer for 60 minutes. Get that going. And you can put in your first hop addition, 60 minutes towards the end of the boil. Let's get that opened. And we put it in the hot bag. Right, it's in. You can tie the hot bag like that. And give it a few dunks, right? Like a bag of tea. There we go. All right. Now, I would suggest leaving the pot open and continue boiling the wort. Um, if you close your lid, you're going to get an overboil. That normally happens. So leave the lid off and let it come to a beautiful rolling boil. During this time, while you are waiting to add your additions, um, it's time to start sanitizing your fermenter bucket. And remember, anything that comes into contact now with your beer, must be sanitized. So we're talking about your your paddle, your thermometer, um, your buckets, everything. Great. So we'll see you again after all of these have been added and we're about to start chilling the wood. 
Okay, we've transferred it to the ice bucket to get it cooled down as fast as possible to 22 degrees Celsius. It mustn't be higher than 28 degrees Celsius, otherwise your yeast will die off. There are two methods. Uh, one method is the immersion chiller, um, this coil that you put inside of your bucket, and the other one is the ice bucket. So I've seen quick and easy method, ice bucket, lots of ice inside, and that brings it down to quite a stable temperature. You want to get it down to uh, temperature as quick as possible, um, and also that helps your sediment of your wort, um, all the sediment particles will sink down to the bottom. Another method is also that you must do is stir your, your beer so that it starts circulating and creating a whirlpool. Leave your hot bag in because this will give it additional flavors. Great, once you have got your whirlpool going, right, your sediment is going to form in the center of your, of your um, container. And from here on, just put your lid back on and cool it down. So we'll take the temperature again. Actually, let me take a reading while I am here. You don't want to move your bucket from here onwards. Um, you want that sediment to form in the center and you don't want to touch it. So at the moment, we have got 60 degrees. So a bit of time to go. We'll catch you a bit later. Alright, we've taken our reading and we are at 22 degrees Celsius. It's time to transfer it into the sanitized fermenter. Alright, I have sanitized my fermenter. I've sanitized the siphon pipe. And I've sanitized the airlock as well. They're all in the sanitized water right now. What you want to do is clip your siphon on the side of the pot. Remember we don't want to get to the middle of the pot as that will uh, siphon the sediment. This gadget is for the bottling. Um, I like taking this off because otherwise I have to keep on pressing this in on the bottom of the fermenter. Just careful when you're taking this off not to lose the spring inside. Okay, now we let this lie in the fermenter. And because we've removed that, uh, we need to create a suction. So we need to crimp that and pull this up. When we're pulling this up, it's sucking the water in, it, in the tube. And now we release this and press down. There we go. Now you can see it siphoning into the fermenter. And it looks like a lovely golden beer fantastic looking brilliant okay it's getting towards the end and I've removed the siphon from the pot as the siphon didn't go right down to the bottom of the pot and we're still getting most of the beer out what I don't want to do is suck up any of the sediment that stuff We've catered for, that we've got the right amount of volume that um, the sediment can stay behind. It's normally about a half a litre to a litre. Show you what that sediment looks like. Okay. There we go. As you can see, we've reached just the bit end. This is a nice little gadget because it can go right up until that point and here you can see all the sediment that's left over. Alright, we've transferred the wort into the fermenter and we want to take a sample reading of the starting gravity or the specific gravity. So let's take that out. I'm going to fill it up to the top. There we go. And we will take that reading at a later stage. You want to cause as much oxygen in the wort so that your yeast can enjoy it while it's busy fermenting. So you want to give it a vigorous stir. Right. 
it must create a lot of oxygen, a lot of bubbles. And this paddle has got um, some gaps in it like that, so it does cause a nice oxygen in the wood. Right, I'm happy with that. Remember, it's come from a sanitized container. And now I want to take the the yeast and I want to just sprinkle it on top of the wood. There we go. And we want to secure it with its lid. There we go, once you hear that click, it is sealed. You want to fill up your airlock halfway. So, let's take a look. You can see, let's zoom out. You can see they're equal and they're halfway. This is sanitizing liquid that I've put in here. You can put in vodka, you can put in any sanitized um, liquid in here. And you want to push that on. Oops, there we go. You can just dry that off later. Make sure you've got a nice seal on it. It's quite deep, there we go. And there, I'm happy with that, it's got a nice seal. And within a few hours, you should start to see this bubble. And we've got it a little top as well. What I do is, you can leave it open, but I like putting little holes through this top and then putting it back on, just so that nothing can fly into it. Great. I'll dry that off. And that is it. Hope you've enjoyed the series of beer making from the beginning, from brewing a bag right through to chilling a wort and having it in your fermenter. And in the next two weeks, we leave it in this fermenter and then thereafter, we'll do the bottling. Cheerio, happy brewing.